Following the PowerPoint, you will be required to complete a quiz in order for your team to complete the pre-registration process. As a captain, it is your job to relay all information to your teammates. It is also your responsibility to make sure that all participants are responsible for the rules and the intramural sports policies posted on the IM League's website. Ignorance of the rules is not an excuse for their violation. The Competitive Sports Office phone number is 608-262-8258 and we are located in room 1025 of the Natatorium. The best way to contact us is by email at imsports at recsports.wisc.edu. In the event of inclement weather, please call the Rec Sports Weather Hotline at 262-4756 and click on Option 4 for cancellation information. We will do our best to announce cancellations by 3 p.m. on weekdays. If a team is wishing to cancel a game, they must have their team captain or co-captain email the Intramural Sports Administrative staff at imsports at recsports.wisc.edu by 12 p.m. the day of the contest with their name, team name, league of play, and their intent to cancel. Once a cancellation has been granted, the request cannot be overturned. Cancellations made after 12 p.m. the day of the contest will result in the team being charged the $25 default fee. Phone cancellations will no longer be accepted. Defaults. If less than the minimum number of required players of a team have checked in with the supervisor at the scheduled location within 10 minutes of the scheduled time of the contest, the supervisor will declare the contest a default. All defaults carry a $25 fee which can be paid online using your IM League, Leagues account. Eligibility. In order to participate in intramural sports, all fee-paying students are eligible to participate. Faculty and staff members are eligible to participate, but they must have a valid recreational sports membership. All participants should activate their account on IM Leagues prior to play. For more information, please visit our, web our website at recsports.wisc.edu to activate your IM Leagues account. Participants may only compete on one single gender team and one co-rec team. They are not allowed to play on two single gender teams or two co-rec teams. Your job as captains is to make sure that your rosters are accurate before the playoffs begin, and rosters can be viewed at any time on IM Leagues. Players may be added to the roster at any time online at IM Leagues or at the game site, provided they are eligible and meet all the requirements. Any team that uses an ineligible player during the regular season will forfeit that game in any game that player was a part of. Any team that uses an ineligible player during the playoffs, playoffs will forfeit the game and will be immediately dropped from further competition. Captains, make sure you please review your rosters before the playoffs start. All participants must have a valid UWID card or Rec Sports membership card that swipes into Fusion. If a participant forgets their UWID card, they can still gain access by using a courtesy pass as long as they have another valid photo ID or have a picture on infusion. Valid photo IDs um, include a photo in the fusion profile, their driver's license, a passport, or any government issue photo ID. Courtesy passes may be issued up to six times per semester for participants. This includes entries into facilities. Numbers are reset at the beginning of every semester. So if you were checking into the natatorium to play basketball, a courtesy pass would be given to you once you checked into the building and then also when you participated in the program. So in a night you could use up to two courtesy passes or more if you forgot your ID and didn't have a picture. This slide is just a breakdown of our sportsmanship rating as follows. Um, remember that you need at least a 4.0 to make the playoffs and to stay in the playoffs. Playoffs. Achieved a 4.0 average or higher in sportsmanship rating. 
and you have less than two forfeits, cancellations, or defaults, or any com combination of the aforementioned. And make sure that you achieve a regular season record of 500 or better. Any team not given the opportunity to play 50% or more of the regular, like, regularly scheduled games, example would be games canceled due to rain, um, will be placed into the playoffs. The day following the end of the regular season, a blank bracket will be posted in the morning. Teams will be ranked by their winning percentage with the tiebreaker being accumulated sportsmanship points. Further ties will be broken randomly by the system. Starting at 5 p.m., teams will select their position on the bracket based on their rank. Focus on your team's best days and times to play throughout the playoffs more than the competition level. If a qualifying team misses their designated slot time, they can jump into the order where it stands and select at that time. Qualifying teams that fail to select their spot in the draft prior to its conclusion will be randomly assigned to an open slot by the league coordinator. Regular season games will not be rescheduled. Playoff games will only be rescheduled due to conflict with other intramural sports activities and academic conflicts, classes, labs, and exams. That does not include student organizations that result in a team not having the minimum number required to start the game. This is why it's important as a captain to definitely check your rosters before the playoffs start. Teams wishing to request a game to be rescheduled must submit a rescheduled request form located on the Rec Sports website under the Intramural Sports tab by 12 p.m. the business day prior to the game. Proof of conflicts must be uploaded into the form located on the website. If a team feels an intramural sports staff member has enforced the rule or policy incorrectly, they must call a timeout immediately following the ruling in question. The intramural sports supervisor will then make a decision regarding the correct ruling and how to proceed. If the intramural sports supervisor is unable to make a decision on the spot, the game will be played under protest and the intramural sports administrative staff will make a decision following uh, the next business day. Only rule interpretations and player eligibility can be protested. Note, the judgment of an, of an official may never be tested. The competitive st sports staff reserves the right to eject any individual, team, or spectator who interrupts the flow of a game in any manner. Players may be ejected before, during, and after any contest by any recreational sports staff member. To regain eligibility, the ejected person must complete each of the following. First, prepare a written statement detailing the events surrounding the incident. Include outline of events surrounding ejection, actions that led to the ejection, assurance that the behavior will not occur again, suggestion for appropriate disciplinary action, and how the behavior will be avoided in the future. The statement should be sent to the coordinator of competitive sports. Secondly, they must schedule an appointment to meet with a coordinator of competitive sports, and their contact information can be found on our website. Please check out the Intramural Sports Handbook for further information. What's new for this year? Lots of rule changes throughout specific sports, so please read through all the rules carefully and relay them to your team before play. One of our biggest, biggest differences this year is in co -rep. The differential between male and female participants can be no more than two now. The old rule was one, and we've relaxed that to two. So make sure that you meet all of the other eligibility requirements. Also new, the Dr. Walter A. Wittich Scholarship. Any student who has participated in an intramural sport during the semester of the award is eligible to apply. But high consideration will go to those individuals who have gone above and beyond in the community, leadership, sportsmanship, and a growing appreciation of lifelong value of physical activity. The scholarship is a $400 scholarship that is awarded to any male or female student that, that applies and is selected. Things that are taken into consideration is participation in intramural sports while at UW-Madison, the leadership so shown both in sport and on campus, examples of sportsmanship, and how involvement in the intramural sports program has influenced lifelong healthy physical activity habits. For questions or more information, please contact us at imsports at recsports.wisc.edu.
Matches will consist of three games. Rally point is rally point scoring is in effect. The first two games are played to 25 points, and the first team to 25 points win. If a third game is necessary, it will be played to 15 points. First team to 15 points win. For all playoff tournament play, the first two games will be played to 25 points. A team must win by two points, or first to 30 points. The third game will be played to 15 points, and teams must win by two points. The back wall is in play only on the side of the team that is returning the service or volley, provided a player on that team touches the ball before it hits the back wall. If a player contacts the ball in such a manner that the ball deflects off the back wall on his or her side of the court and goes over the net, the ball shall be considered live and in play. The ceiling is in bounds only on the side of the team that is returning the serve or volley, provided that a player on that team touches the ball before it hits the ceiling. Contacting two or more walls with the ball is permitted only by the team that is in possession of the ball on their side. If the ball crosses the net after contacting two or more walls without making contact with a player, a point side out will be awarded. The ball will be considered out of bounds if it hits the ceiling or back wall on the opponent's side, or two or more consecutively on the serve, volley, or block. Jump serves are illegal in volleyball. The server shall stand back at the end line and may serve from any spot behind that line. The server cannot step on the service line when serving. The server must finish contacting the ball before touching the court. A serve ball that hits the net and passes over the net is an illegal serve. A serve ball may contact one side wall on either side of the net legally as long as it doesn't touch the net. This concludes the Intramural Sports Volleyball Captain's Meeting. The captain's quiz found on IM Leagues must be completed with a score of 80% or higher before a team can be created. Feel free to contact us at imsports at recsports.wist.edu with your questions or feedback. I would also strongly suggest that you check out the rules posted on IM Leagues in regards to the sport of volleyball. Best of luck this upcoming season.